Praise the Lord. Rise up, I like to pray with you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you very much because we know you are a good God. You have brought us in here. You have brought people here from different churches. You are going to do something great in the ministry of everyone in Jesus' name. All our brothers, ministers who are here, sisters, ministers who are here, these members of the choir, usher, security, everybody helping, oh Lord, I pray you will impart their lives with your power. You will do something greater in their lives. And you will use everyone, black or white, short or tall, coming from deep and high for Baptist or Assemblies, Pentecostal, Charismatic or anyone or Presbyterian. Oh Lord, put your power in every one of our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, I pray you will use us in this end time. And you will do great, mighty things in the lives of all your people in Jesus' name. Thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you very much. God bless you. You can be seated. As I had the first session. And in the first session we dealt with leadership. And we dealt with the lost leader. The limited leader. The latent leader. And the liberated leader. That was a good message. And if you were not here at that time, even if you were here at that time, it's recorded on CD and it's recorded on uh, cassette. And you can have the cassette. It will be a blessing to you. We're now coming to another message. We're, look, we're looking at Matthew chapter 4. In Matthew chapter 4, we're in verse 19 and verse 20. Matthew chapter 4, verse 19. And it says unto them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And they straightway left their nets and followed him. They straightway left their nets and followed him. I'm talking to you now on follow Christ and be fulfilled. Follow Christ and be fulfilled. The Lord has told us, he has revealed to us the secret of fulfillment in ministry. The secret of fruitfulness in ministry. And the secret of success in ministry, it says, you follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Can I just turn your mind back to Acts of the Apostles? And when these people were eventually made fishers of men and he reproduced in them his own life as well as his mission, as well as his ministry, you find by Peter saying that Yet they shall turn to the Lord. And 3,000 came to know the Lord. Fishers of men. And you find him saying in Acts chapter 3. Silver and gold have I none. What I have I give unto you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. As a result of that. About 5,000 came to know the Lord. Fishers of men. And then you find him in Acts chapter 5. As he came out of the prison. And the angel said. Go temple and declare to them this word of life and many people listen to them and in the end of that chapter they went from house to house breaking bread and teaching the word of God and then you come to Acts chapter 8 when the whole of Samaria turned to know the Lord and he sent John and Peter unto them who brought them into the infilling baptism immersion in the Holy Ghost fishers of men then you come to Acts of the Apostle chapter 9 when, when Peter raised Dorcas and because of that the whole of that city Lystra. They listen to the word of the Lord. Fishers of men. You come to Acts of the Apostles chapter 10. When this St. Peter, he opened his mouth and began to talk to them and while speaking to them, the Spirit of God came upon Cornelius and his house and all the people that were listening. Fishers of men. And so Jesus said, you follow me. If you will do your part and follow me, then I will make you fishers of men. Follow Christ and be fulfilled. Let me just uh, tell you in simple terms, following Christ. Number one, the false followers. The false followers. Number two, the faithful followers. Number three, the fulfilled followers. Number one, the false followers. These are the people that will say, I don't understand, we don't understand. We are following Christ. And he said he will make us fishers of men. He said he'll make us successful. He said he'll make us fulfilled. He said he'll make us happy. He said he will give us success. And they will say, but I don't see the success. I don't see the fulfillment. You know why? Because in many cases, they are not truly following Christ. They are false followers. 
before we can see the fulfillment of the promise of God, what he said, that I will make you fishers of men. We want to become faithful followers of God. And when you come to that point, you become a faithful follower of Christ. You're going to see, you'll be a fruitful follower, a fulfilled follower. Let's come to this number one, the false followers. How do we know people that say they are following the Lord and yet they are false in their following? In 2 Kings chapter 17, 2 Kings chapter 17, verse 33, they feared the Lord and served their own gods. Can you see the connection between those two statements in the same verse? They feared the Lord and served their own gods after the manner of the nation whom they carried away from theirs. Unto this day they do after their former manners, they fear not the Lord. Neither do they after, the, after their statutes, or after their ordinances, or after their law and commandment which the Lord commanded the children of Jacob, whom he named Israel. There are some people that are religious, but they are not righteous. There are people that may go to church, but they have not come to Christ. There are people that profess that they know Christ, but they do not possess Christ. There are people that know the story of Calvary, but they do not have the grace coming from Calvary. And it says they feared the Lord. There was a, you know, there's a tradition with them that they know the name of God. They know the demand of God. And they have a slavish fear for God. They know God as a great God, a creator, a judge. But they do not know God as their father. Neither do they have the love of God in them to really follow the Lord. Look at verse 15. It says in that same chapter, that 2 Kings chapter 17, verse 15. And they rejected his statutes and his covenant that he made with their fathers. And his testimonies which he testified against them. And then it says, and they followed vanity and became vain. These are people, religious people. They fear the Lord. That's, they are religious. They have a denomination. They have a church they go to. And they do some religious rites and ceremonies and duties. And yet they follow after vanity. And they became vain. And they went after the heathen that were around about them. Concerning whom the Lord had charged them that they should not do like them. Anybody who says, I am following Christ and is still chewing tobacco like unbelievers chew tobacco and still drinks alcohol like everybody else in the world is drinking alcohol and is uh, running about with many women not satisfied with one wife, one woman that belongs to him. Anybody that says I'm following the Lord and is stealing like other people are stealing and is still fighting like other people are fighting and is still doing evil like other people are doing evil. They say they follow the Lord. Those are the false followers. And that is why for many of those people who say that we are following the Lord, we do not see the sign that Jesus said he will do for us, that he will make us fishers of men, because they are false followers. Look at verse 9. In verse 9, and the children of Israel did secretly those things which were not right against the Lord their God. You see, those people that in the public, they will look very saintly and sanctimonious, but in the private they look very satanic and very much evil in the public they may sing about amazing grace but in the private the lies are disgraceful and dishonoring to the lord those are the people that do not have the fulfillment of the promise of god follow me and i will make you fishers of men because they are false followers in second kings chapter 5 verse 21 second kings chapter 5 verse 21 the false followers. In verse 21 it says, And Gehazi, maybe you call him Gehazi, uh, followed after Naaman. And when Naaman saw him running after him, he lighted down from, it, from the chariot to meet him and said, It's all well. And he said, It is well. All is well. My master has sent me saying, Behold, even now they have become to me. From Mount Ephraim, two young men of the sons of the prophets. Give them, I pray thee, a talent of silver and two changes of raiment. And there are some people that are following Christ, and that's what they say. They say they are following Christ, but actually they are following money. 
they are following the things of this world and if there is any layman that comes to the church and gets healed then they run after him all they're looking for is money they are in the christian church for the business of making money and then they're looking for ways and avenues where they can get money at all costs by all means with any method and you know sometimes you find somebody who says he's following the lord and then a rich man comes and when a rich man comes to the church he cannot preach the truth unto them it's not like Jesus Christ because Jesus told Nicodemus, ye must be born again. And then he told the rich young ruler that came to him, if thou shalt be perfect, go and sell what you have, give your money to the poor, and then come back and follow after me. And the rich man was not able to do that. Jesus Christ did not hide the truth from rich men. He did not hide the truth from the people who are highly placed in the world. But you see these people that say they are following after the Lord and they establish a church there, establish a ministry there and all they are doing is just looking for rich men. And when they get those rich men, they are not going to tell them the truth of the word of God. They want the money from Naaman. They may not be instrumental to the healing of Naaman because it was Elisha that was instrumental to the healing of Naaman. And then Naaman said, be content to have this money from me. And he said, no, freely you have received and freely give. And he pressed him and he said, no, I don't sell my prayer. We don't sell miracle. And we don't sell healing. And we don't sell deliverance. Take your money away. And Gehazi was wondering, what kind of preacher is this, Elisha? Look at money. We can be millionaires just like that. And we can just tell this name and anything we want. And he will give to us. And he said, I'm not going to follow a man like this. If you want to remain poor all your life, when you see money, you will not take it. I will not follow you. And then he ran after Naaman. And when Naaman saw him, he said, what's the matter? Oh, he said, my master just sent me now. That some people just came and we have a need. And therefore, you'll give us one talent of silver. That was a, a large amount of money at that time. And then some changes of raiment. And then he even gave him more than he wanted. He came back and Elisha knew where he had gone. Gezai, where have you been? Oh, thy servant went, went nowhere. Thank God for the Spirit of God. I said, thank God for the Spirit of God. When you have the Spirit of God, you will not be blind. When you have the Spirit of God, and you have the gift of the Spirit, the watch of knowledge, and the watch of wisdom, and discerning of spirit, and the gift of faith, and the gift of healing, and the gift of working of miracles, and prophecy, and speaking in diverse kinds of tongues, and interpretation. When you have the gift of God, you will not be deceived. And so Elisha said, did it my heart follow after you? When you run after that man, is it the time to take changes of raiment or money? The leprosy therefore of Naaman come upon you. That man was not a fulfilled follower because he was a false follower. A false follower. And thank God, thank God, when you are like that, God will back you up in Jesus' name. Did I just tell you now during my introduction that I went to Germany? And this wasn't even deep alive. And then before the, you know, before I got there, they wrote to our office in Lagos. And our church secretary got the a letter from the email on my behalf. They were asking a question. Now, what cost, what will your ticket cost so that we can pay for your ticket? And then how much money do you normally request that when you come to a place like that, that's the way they understood Christianity, and, uh, that you normally expect for us to give unto you? And then the church secretary told me that they are asking for how much your ticket will cost and then how much are they going to give you when you preach i said right back to them and tell them not to worry about the ticket that we'll take care of the ticket ourselves and then tell them about honorarium and money that we don't deal with that we don't do business with christianity i'll come there and minister to them and just for the lord to bless them freely you have received and freely give and then i got there and when we got there where are you going to stay? Put us anywhere you have. And they put us where they are. What kind of food are you going to eat? Give us whatever food you want to give us. And they gave us whatever kind of food they wanted to give us that they had. And then we went to all the places and ministered. And then they said, how do you, can you minister to young, uh, you know, a small crowd? Because they had all the people lined up. 
and the first uh, congregation was just about 70 people. They say that we've read, we've seen the internet, and we'll see all the programs on the internet, and you minister to thousands of people. I said, don't worry, give me the people that are available. Where are they? 70, I minister to them. Another group were at 30, I minister to them. Another one, about 35, I minister to them. And then in the evening meetings, when you now have, you know, the large uh, congregation that you want to minister to, and I minister to them. And when I finished one of the sessions, one of those white people ran after me and he said, please, I want to tell you, you have inspired me to love the Lord more. That's more than money. That's more than money. When you can inspire somebody, inspire somebody to love the Lord more and to want to go on in the Lord, that is more than money. And that is how to follow the Lord. You will follow the Lord because I am going to pass the baton over to you. And what the Lord has used me to do in all these places, you will do also in Jesus' name. Amen. And you know, I go to many kinds of places to preach. And you know, the deeper life people here, you think I only minister to people that, you know, are like a deeper life. And, uh, and as I told you, when the Lord has sent you, he will give you fulfillment in Jesus' name. Amen. And I'm praying for you that this power will come upon you. The wisdom of God will come upon you. But make sure that you are willing to follow the Lord all the way through. By the time we finished in Germany last week, uh, the, the leader there came to, uh, uh, he came to finalize everything. And by the time he was talking to them, he said that uh, our brother then, they mentioned my name, said, this is his first time here, but he's coming back again. And everybody shouted, they were so happy, they wanted me back again. And even where I go to, you know, cause some trouble, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, I'm a troublemaker. And before you finish on Saturday, I might, you know, pinch you a little. Say, praise the Lord. <laughs> you know, you, when I begin to talk about things, you say, ah, is he going to, this is not deeper life. This, if it's not deeper life, this is Jesus Church. And you are coming from Jesus Church. And I'm going to tell you things that will make you shake a little. Praise the Lord. <laughs> You know, I go to this particular church and they invited me. It's not my fault, it's their fault. I said, It's their fault. You know, when I got there, I saw that, you know, in the hall, the women were sitting like this and the men were sitting like this. And they partitioned them so that the women will not see the men and the men will not see the women. Church. And uh, then they didn't believe you cannot clap your hands, you cannot sing chorus, women cannot stand up and give testimony. You know, and I got there, and I looked at them, I said, these people are going to make some trouble. But I didn't say anything, and then they introduced me, and they said, Pastor so and so coming from Nigeria, and then I got there. And, and you believe in healing. And there was a medical doctor there. That medical doctor, he will examine you inside out, if you said you were healed. So eventually, I preached the word of God. Where they did not believe that God heals today. And after finishing preaching to them, then I said, now, we're going to turn this church over to Jesus Christ. Did you say amen because they didn't know what I meant? And I said, now, Jesus is going to do what he used to do. And that if you see, he raised up your hand, I began to pray. As I began to pray, one woman there got healed, another man got healed, another fellow got healed, another fellow got healed. They didn't remember that they should not clap their hands, so they started clapping their hands. And uh, then, when the, after that has happened, then the senior pastor, I looked at him with the corner of my eyes. You know, we preachers, we, you know, we can spy you a little too. And then I saw that he was angry. I acted as if I didn't see him. So I said that, you know, the Lord has not finished. The Lord still wants to do something in your life. And then I prayed for some other people. And then I said, you want to give testimony? And they started rushing out. And the women that never spoke in that church, they started running out. And the doctor was, uh, was standing at the edge of the platform before you can come up. And he examined them. And the doctor said, true, they are healed. And then they came up, women spoke and men spoke spontaneously. Somebody started a chorus in the congregation and they started singing and clapping. And then I looked at the senior pastor. The senior, everybody was happy except the senior pastor. <laughs> and eventually, you know, after the meeting, they came to tell me, they said, this is not uh, our church building, that these people gave us the church building to use and see what you have done today. The senior pastor is miserable now because you've caused trouble for him. I said, don't worry, we'll fix it tomorrow. 
And then we, get, we got there the following day. As I got there the following day, I acted as if nobody is angry or unhappy. I just said, here we are today again. Jesus is here today. And we're going to do what Jesus will do. And then I looked at the man with the corner of my eyes and said, he didn't know what to expect for that day. But the Lord moved in wonderful ways. The third day, the Lord moved in wonderful ways. Then the final day on the fourth day, uh, before I got into the hall, the ministers were waiting somewhere. And so they pulled me back and said, don't go to the hall yet. Come over here. So I thought, there is trouble. So I said, but you know, Daniel went through the lion's den and I will go through. Because I still have ministry in Nigeria, and I knew that I will, I will come to Nigeria. I knew that they would not kill me there. So I said, oh Lord, go with me, whatever. I was prepared for, I thought they were going to fight me. And so when I got there, I saw the minister, they, they sat down. And you know, I, you know, when you see people who are quiet, they are quiet. And you are dignified. And you see it as if, if they are serious, you are serious. And then after that, then somebody spoke up and said, now we called you to tell us the next date you are coming because the congregation will be asking us for the next date so i said now i can come out now i can tell them what i knew then i pointed to the senior pastor i said senior pastor i know that you have trouble with the council of elders because they said that i disorganized everything are we going to come back? You know, if I come back, I'll make more trouble for you. Oh, he said, that was the first night. After the first night, he himself now has been touched and revived. And that he was not the same anymore. And that things are totally different now. I said, that's right about your council of elders. Oh, he said, the council of elders, we have all changed. We have been transformed. Everything has become totally new now. We want you to come back. I said, I don't normally go back to the same country two times a year because I have a lot of places to decide this one, you must come. The people will not allow us to rest and I had to give them another date. And then I went back there and that medical doctor, by the way, you'll be surprised now. I even had to be cooling the medical doctor that is so, is so fervent and is so serious. And, uh, you know, when I went there for the first time, and you, you know, sometimes say in Nigeria, when I talk about worldliness, and I say, you know, women dress according to the Bible. When I got over there, and I saw the wife of that medical doctor, it's like you've never seen somebody using jewelry in your life. Jewelry was everywhere, in the ear, in the hand, in everywhere, and the painting, and the palm, it was serious. But, you know, uh, even though it wasn't deeper life, I just, you know, acted as if I didn't know anything. And I still preached the word of God. The last time I went there, now that woman, if you saw her, you'll think she had been in deeper life for the past 20 years. God is doing something great. If God can do that over there, the Lord will do something in you. You will become a firebrand in Jesus' name. But you must be a faithful follower of Jesus Christ, not a false follower. I want you to look at Ezekiel chapter 13. Ezekiel chapter 13 verse 3. The false followers. In Ezekiel chapter 13, reading from verse 3, here it tells us, Thus says the Lord God, Woe unto the foolish prophets that follow their own spirit, and have not seen, and have seen nothing. You see, there are people that follow just their own ideas, their own opinions, and their own spirit. Those are false followers. That's why they do not have the fulfillment of the promise of God in their lives, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. We will be faithful followers. I said we will be faithful followers. I come now to point number two. The faithful followers. That the Lord has shown us the way and the path that we are to follow. And we become faithful to the Lord. And we say, yes, Lord, that's exactly what we're going to do. The faithful followers. Let me show you one of them. In Numbers chapter 14, verse 24. In Numbers 14, verse 24. But my servant Caleb, because he had another spirit with him, and has followed me fully, him will I bring into the land whereinto he went, and his seed shall possess it. Those are faithful followers. You see, you might even be in the same denomination. You might be in the same local church. 
you might be in the same uh, convention as a church and then you find 10 people out of 12 they're saying it's not possible we cannot get into the land we cannot be righteous we cannot be holy we cannot do what the lord has called us to do and these 10 spies are saying the same thing but they're on the wrong side of the fence and then you and another person lone voices you're saying yes it's possible because of calvary it's possible because of the faithfulness of god to abraham it is possible because the lord god almighty is an immutable god an unchanging god a god that remains the same yesterday today and forever we know it is possible and we know the promises of god are yea and amen in christ because of that we know it's possible and then you make up your mind even though the other 10 in the majority they are saying they cannot we cannot you cannot nobody can yet as a faithful follower you'll say i've had the word of god i've seen the word of god and i've seen that god is able to do anything he decides to do and he has promised us and his promises will never fail because of that i believe then you become like caleb and then you say i know it will be done and then god said because caleb was of another spirit that's what god is looking for in these days he's looking for people of another spirit people of a conquering spirit people of a believing spirit people that will not doubt god even though they see the giants on the way and they're willing to follow all the way through he says my servant caleb because he had another spirit with him and has followed me fully him will I bring into the land. Numbers chapter 32. So read about, about this man Caleb. Numbers chapter 32. Verse 11 and verse 12. Surely none of the men that came up out of Egypt from 20 years old and upward shall see the land which I swear unto Abraham and unto Isaac and unto Jacob because they have not followed me fully. As you look at that promise of Jesus Christ, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. And then you ask yourself, why has that not been fulfilled in my life? Maybe as you examine your life, you have not totally, completely, entirely, wholeheartedly followed the Lord. But when you make up your mind that every word of Christ you will follow, and the example and pattern of Christ you will follow, and the life of Christ you will follow. When you make up your mind like that, that no matter what others do, you will stand by the word of God. You will see what Jesus said you will see. You will have what Jesus said you will have. You will know what Jesus said you will know. Follow me, he said. And then, if you do that, I will make you fishers of men. In verse 12, save Caleb. Except Caleb, the son of Jephone, the Canaanite. And Joshua, the son of Nun, for they have only followed the Lord. The challenge the Lord is bringing to you this afternoon is that you'll make up your mind, come with me. I will wholly, completely follow the Lord. It's going to set you apart because you're not going to be like all the ordinary people. And you are going to come out of the crowd. And you are going to say, I am going to follow the Lord. And when you go to follow the Lord like that, God does the impossible, incredible in your life. And you know, sometimes it's like if you are in a place where you, you know that the people there, they do not all accept what you are saying. I'm not talking about you. You accept the word of God. You are Bible-believing ministers. Nigeria has been blessed very much by believing people, not just deeper life. All of us who are here, whether you are deeper life or not, anytime we come to Nigeria, we rejoice because Christianity in Nigeria is something that is vibrant and lively. And thank God for the ministers all over in the various churches here in Nigeria. But you know, when you go to other places, it's so very different. I was in a particular place. They called me uh, to have a conference with them. And about 2,500 white people in Britain, they gathered together. They wanted to know about the gifts of the Spirit. And so for the whole week, I was talking about gifts of the Spirit, gifts of the Spirit. Then we'll have the teaching in the morning. In the evening, we'll demonstrate. And it was a great time of demonstrating the power and the gifts of the Spirit. 
I don't know whether our God will, uh, you know, give us chance. Uh, you know, I know that uh, they are inviting me in all, all over uh, deeper life, uh, you know, come to the north and come to Middle Belt. But, uh, you know, some of you that have the, uh, the uh, testimony of the head of service in, um, in Omaha, you will know that I've been coming to Imo State, uh, uh, you know, from the early 70s. And I think our dear brother Biora may be there. And uh, you know the MBG. I used to come every year to the MBG before Deepa Light even came over here. And SU and everything. And so I have a special love and attachment to the southeast of Nigeria. And um, <laughs> praise the Lord. And I don't know whether I don't know whether I will still don't tell other Deepa Light people, you know, they'll be pulling me away from you. And I don't know whether I will still come back here. Just talk about the gifts of the spirit. Just that. Praise the Lord. But you know, we're talking about the gifts of the Spirit. And this is a place where they didn't, they believe that, you know, if your wife is gone, then you marry another. Well, you know, after one of the sessions, I finished preaching. And uh, one of the ministers, a white man, he came to me and he said, uh, I see that you believe God has us. I said, of course, yes. And that God can do anything and everything. I said, of course, yes. He said, join hands with me, agree with me, pray that God will give me a new wife. So I said, because the man looked older than I was, so I said, have you not married before? Yes, I married before, but you know she is gone, and now I need to marry another person. And uh, I said, but I don't pray for such things. He said, you will not pray with me. I said, I'll pray with you, but I'll not pray on that one. And uh, so he, I, then I asked him, I said, what happened to your wife? Oh, he said that, uh, you know, I went to the doctor and the doctor saw that the whole body, that is all the blood in my body, was poisoned. And because I'm about to die, when that woman saw the medical report, then that's why she packed that load and went. I said, I now know what to pray for. I said, I'm going to pray for you. And then I'm going to tell the Lord to remove all the poison in your blood system. And then you don't, don't, don't tell your wife anything. Go to the doctor, have another medical report. When you have that new medical report, for to copy it and send to your wife, don't tell the wife to come back, but I tell you the wife is coming back. And then, and then we pray. You know, we, we, we don't change the doctrine whether we're in Britain or America or anywhere. We just keep to the same doctrine and the same Bible. And God is walking. And God will walk in your life. And so eventually we, you know, we prayed and, and the man, you know, simple hearted man, those white people, some of them are very, very simple at heart. He believed. After the prayer, he went to the medical doctor, the same doctor that tested him before. And when he got there, he said, I need another medical examination. And the doctor did not agree. The doctor examined him, couldn't find a trace of poison. <laughs> totally and completely healed. And then, uh, you know, after that, what happened is that he did what I said. He photocopied that medical report and sent to the wife. He didn't tell the wife, come back. He didn't tell the wife, I'm dreaming of you or I can't live without you. He just sent, uh, you know, the, uh, the medical report. And when the woman got that, she packed that load and then came back home. <laughs> and uh, the following year, I went back there. You're wondering why they called me back there. Let me tell you, I'll come back to this other story. What happened is, after I finished with the conference of the 2005, 2,500 ministers, and I told them about the gifts of the Spirit, then they invited me to a local church of membership, I was about 600. And uh, then they put me in the house of the assistant pastor. And that assistant pastor, you know, we ate together, we fellowship together, and then in the evening I would preach in their church. And uh, then in that uh, place, the university people had that uh, saw one Nigerian that came. And that Nigerian that came, maybe he was a lecturer at the university before, but I taught mathematics. But this was a sociology class. And the sociology class uh, said they have been studying about Africa and about the world in sociology. Therefore, they wanted me to come so they can check up about Nigeria and some other things about Africa. So, and then the assistant pastor asked me, now, I'm sorry, pastor, these university children, they are asking you to come. They will not waste your time. If you can just give them 30 minutes uh, address, and then about 10 minutes uh, question and answer, they'll be all right. Can you do that? I said, yes. Uh, then he said, but they want us to come in 30 minutes time. Would you still go? I said, yes. But we have not prepared. I said, don't worry, we will go. And then we got, why did I do that? I told you in the morning, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. 
because I know that when I get there, I will open my mouth and something reasonable will come out. And that's what I'm passing to you. Anytime you have a challenge like that, the Lord will go with you. Yeah. You will open your mouth and something reasonable, something, uh, something supernatural will come out in Jesus' name. Yeah. And then eventually, when we got uh, the class was waiting, sociology class. And I never taught sociology in my life. And then the uh, lecturer there introduced me. This, they say, Pastor so and so, he was a mathematician, and now this sociology uh, talked to the people. And then I started talking. I took them for about uh, 50 minutes to one hour, just, just talking to them, sociology. And then they said, uh, Question time. And they began to ask their questions. And then we spent another 30 minutes, 40 minutes, questions and answer, purely on sociology, not Bible. And when we came out of that place, so the assistant pastor said, how did that happen? I said, that's what I'm teaching you, on the gifts of the Spirit. And so when we got back home on, I think Wednesday or so, he knelt and I said, pray for me. I said, I'll pray for you. And then I prayed for him. There's something we call the transference of Spirit that will transfer the power of God into their lives. And then after praying for him, he was, you know, he felt good, but it's not enough to feel good. Do good. I said, do good. And after this conference, you will never be the same again in Jesus' name. Yeah. And then we, you know, Thursday, I went and ministered. Friday, the last night, I was in church. And I, went, I didn't tell the assistant pastor, but you know, I've been a teacher all my life. And when you, when you teach somebody, you want them to practice what? You have taught them, but I didn't tell him. So we got to church. And I told you those who are here in the morning that when Louis of, uh, of uh, Britain did that to me, he preached and then he handed over to me to pray for the sick. And so I finished preaching uh, that uh, Friday. And then when I finished preaching, I said, today it's your assistant pastor that is going to minister to you. He was surprised. So he looked at me when he said, what are you doing to me? I said, I already prayed for you uh, when we were in the house. Now get up and do it. And then he was standing on the, on the platform. And then he said, let us pray. The people rose up and they began to pray. While they were praying, he wanted to just say, you know, the prayer the normal way. You know, the way I learned how to swim. Uh, when I, the first time I was going to swim, I was at the riverside like this. And, uh, you know, I was shivering. I didn't know I could swim. Then somebody pushed me into the river. In trying to survive, that's how I started swimming. And that's what I did to him. He was a she shivery. I was saying, uh, we're going to pray. And then I, saw, then I tapped him. I said, there's somebody there having, I revealed the problem. Say, don't say I said it, just say, there's somebody there having this problem. And then they, he said that and the fellow raised up his hand and he prayed. I said, the fellow is healed. You know, I wasn't using microphone. He was using microphone. So he said, you are healed. Wave the hand and the fellow waved the hand. Then I said, there's somebody there having that problem. That's word of knowledge. And then he, he said that. And then the fellow, you know, he prayed for the person. That was all. Then he went on. He was moving now in the spirit. I didn't have to help him anymore. I pushed him into the river. And the moment I pushed him into the river, then he began to swim. And now he's filled with the power of the Almighty God. Now, you know some preachers, when they tell you stories, they forget where they're coming from. I don't forget. I was telling you about the man that told me to pray for him to marry a second wife. And that his blood system was filled with poison. And the reason they invited me back the following year, that's why I told you all these other stories, that that's why they got me back the following year. The following year when I got back, this man came to me after one of the sessions. And he said, Pastor, do you remember me? I said, I don't you know white people of you look alike. And I don't know him from B. Then he said, I'm the one that said I needed another wife. And you said you are not going to pray for a second wife. And then you told me to go for medical report. And I went for medical report. And then he said, I have the pleasure of introducing my wife to you. My wife has come back. <laughs> and everything you have lost in your life, you will get everything back in Jesus' name. You know, if you're a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ, He will make you to have the fruit. He will make you to have the fulfillment. And that's why we're here in this professional summit, as well as in this minister's conference, so that you will be a faithful follower of the Lord, and the Lord will do wonders through your life in Jesus' name. Yeah. Just by following after the Lord in 1 Peter chapter 2. 1 Peter chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 21. Was Peter chapter 2, verse 21. For even hereunto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps. That's all he requires. Follow his steps. That's what he meant when he said, Follow me. And if you follow the steps of Jesus Christ, 
speak like he spoke, preach what he preached, live the way he lived, do what he would have done, forgive the way he forgave, love the way he loved, be holy as he was holy, receive the grace of God in your life and grow in grace and grow in wisdom and grow in stature like he did. If you follow after the footsteps of Jesus Christ, then he will fulfill his word in your life, follow after his steps. It tells us in Ephesians chapter 5, reading from verse 1, Ephesians chapter 5, reading from verse 1, Be ye therefore followers of God as their children. Anything you are doing, that's the call of God upon your life, that you are followers of God as their children and walk in love. That's following God. That's following God. When you walk in love, anything you are going to do, if I do this, will my neighbor interpret it as hatred or love? If I speak like this to my wife, will my wife interpret it as hatred or love? If I act like this to my neighbor, will my neighbor interpret it as hatred or love? Anything you will do, think about it before you do it. And make sure that you are walking in love. You are acting in love. You are conducting your life in love. Walk in love as their children. And then he tells us, and I, I, just like Jesus Christ, who has loved us and has given himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God, a sweet-smelling savor. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as become a saints. Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting which are not convenient, but rather the giving of thanks. That's how to follow the Lord. And as you make up your mind this very day, that you will follow the Lord faithfully, He will fulfill His promise in your life. And you, by the grace of God, will move in a greater, higher ministry in Jesus' name. I come to point number three, the fulfilled followers. The fulfilled followers. Now, remember, there are two parts to what we read together. The first part is, follow me. The second part is, and I will make you fishers of men. That means, I'll make you fruitful, you'll be fruitful. I'll make you fulfilled, you'll be fulfilled. We have seen the case of, of uh, Caleb that he followed after the Lord fully. Let's see the fulfillment of the promise of God in his life. And what God did for him, the Lord will do for you. In Joshua chapter 14, Joshua chapter 14, reading from verse 6. Then the children of Judah came unto Joshua in uh, Gilgal. And Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, the Canaanite, said unto him, Thou knowest the sin that the Lord said unto Moses, the man of God, concerning me, and thee in Kadesh Barnea. Forty years old was I, when Moses, the servant of the Lord, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to espy out the land. And I brought him word again as it was in mine heart. Nevertheless, my brethren that, which, that went up with me made the heart of the people melt. But I wholly followed the Lord my God. Well, you have the testimony that you have wholly, wholeheartedly, completely, and truthfully and faithfully follow the Lord, then you can expect the fulfillment of the promise of God in your life. And now in verse 10, Behold, the Lord has kept me alive. Behold, the Lord has kept me alive. As he said, these forty and five years, even since the Lord spake this word unto Moses, while the children of Israel wandered in the wilderness, and now, lo, I am this day, first call, and five years old. As yet, I am as strong this day as I was in the day that Moses sent me. That's fulfillment. The fulfillment of the promise of God. It says, look at it. Behold, lo, I am as strong this day as I was in the day that Moses sent me out. As my strength was then, even so is my strength now for war, both to go out and to come in. Now therefore, give me this mountain. The Lord will give you the mountain. Yeah. Because you have totally, completely followed the Lord. As we follow the Lord wholeheartedly, he says, this is what he will do for us. And it reminds you of Elisha, following Elijah. And because Elisha followed Elijah wholeheartedly, not looking here or looking there, he received the fulfillment in his life. In 2 
Kings chapter 2, reading from verse 1. And it came to pass when the Lord would take up Elijah into heaven by a whirlwind that Elijah went with Elisha from Gilgal. And Elijah said unto Elisha, Tarry here, I pray thee, for the Lord has sent me to Bethel. And Elisha said unto him, As the Lord liveth, and as I so liveth, I will not leave thee. And they went down to Bethel. This is a man that made up his mind, he will follow his master. He will follow Elijah. And Elijah said, Elisha, you stay here. I don't want you to go through all the trouble. You know, that's the excuse some people give. And they say, well, uh, the Lord has given Pastor so-and-so that kind of ministry. And I'm not going to follow that path. Why not? Check up. If Jesus Christ manifested that kind of ministry, then follow after that ministry. You're not really following Paul or Peter. You're following Jesus Christ. He said, follow me. Everything he preached, you will preach. Everywhere he went, you will go. And everything he did, you will do. And all to follow the Lord Jesus Christ. You are going to follow the Lord. And so Elijah said to Elisha, you stay here. And Elisha said, no, I will not stay. I will not remain behind because I made up my mind. I was going to follow you and I'm going to follow you all the way through. And the sons of the prophets in verse 3 that was Bethel came forth to Elisha and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Lord will take away thy master from thy head today? He said, Yea, I know it. Hold your peace. There are times you don't, dis you don't discuss with the people that have nowhere going. The people that are not making up their mind to follow after the Lord fully, they want to get you into a discussion. And the discussion is going to be a distraction. Therefore, you don't want any discussion or distraction. Yes, I know you told your peace and follow it. I have a goal. And you have a goal. I said you have a goal. And you have something burning within your soul. You want something. And the Lord will give you that thing. And Elijah said, it must fall unto him, Elisha, tarry here, I pray thee. For the Lord has sent me to Jericho. And he said, as the Lord liveth, and as I so liveth, I will not leave thee. So they came to Jericho. And the sons of the prophets that were Jericho came to Elisha and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Lord will take away thy master from thy head today? And he answered and said, I, Yes, I know it. Hold your peace. Everywhere Elisha went, there were people that wanted to stop him. Nobody will stop you. Yeah. And Elijah in verse 6, Elijah said unto him, Tarry here, I pray thee. Uh, Tarry here, I pray thee. Uh, for the Lord has sent me to Jordan. And he said, As the Lord leaves, and as I so liveth, I will not leave thee. And they too went on. And the fifty sons of the prophets went and stood to view a pharaoh. And they stood, they too stood by Jordan. And Elijah took his mantle and wrapped it together and smote the waters. And they were divided hither and thither, so that they too went over on dry ground. If Elisha was another kind of man, he'll be thinking, look at this man. And I know the Lord is going to take him away. He has divided the sea. And now if I pass on with him, how will I come back? Don't cross the bridge before you reach there. Don't think of the future before you get to the future. Today, just think of what you need to do today. Tomorrow will take care of itself. And before tomorrow, before that challenge comes tomorrow, new power will come upon you. A new anointing will come upon you. What will I do if I get into this situation? Before you get there, don't worry about it. When you get there, you will also pass through the river. And so eventually they went together and it came to pass in verse 9. When they were gone over that Elijah said unto Elisha, Ask what I shall do for thee before I be taken from thee. And Elisha said, I pray thee, let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. That's what he wanted. That's why I was following and you who have come to the Lord, and you are following the Lord in his lifestyle, and you are following the Lord in his ministry, and you are following the Lord in his mission, what is in your heart? What do you want to become? As a woman of God, as a man of God, as a worker in the vineyard, as a leader in the vineyard, as a person in this time, at this hour, raised up for this purpose, what are you going to become? You are going to become somebody. And the Lord is going to do something you never dreamt of through your life. Yes. And the Lord will accomplish it. Yes. And all you need is just keep on following. Follow me. And I will make you fishers of men. Actually, before this time, God knew Elisha. And God sent Elijah to Elisha. And God told Elijah what Elisha will become. But Elijah never discussed it with Elisha. 
and he even wanted to leave him behind before that sea was fulfilled he took the decision the determination the diligence in the heart of this man elisha saying I will not leave you. I'm following for a purpose. And until I see that purpose fulfilled, nothing will turn me back. And I come to tell you this afternoon, when the Lord Jesus called you, he had a great purpose in his mind. And he had a great achievement, accomplishment in his mind. That you are going to be somebody, you are going to do something. Discouragement may come in the way. Difficulties may come in the way. Some challenges may come in the way. Some men may even tell you to stay back. Even the people that have been encouraged, they may tell you, Tarry here, we are going on. Somebody may tell you and just say, Well, we know that you, you are not very strong and you cannot bear this. Just stay where you are. They'll tell you that. That's a test to your determination, but nothing will tie you down. We're moving on together. And we're moving on with the Lord Jesus Christ. I've made up my mind. I will keep on following. And that thing that the Lord Jesus wants to accomplish in my life is going to accomplish in my life. And you too, you will keep on following. And then as you are following, one day we'll meet on the other side. You will have climbed your mountain. You will run your race. You will do your ministry. You will accomplish your ministry. And what God is raising up out of you to be a hero in ministry, you are going to be in Jesus' name. Yeah. Very simple. Follow the Lord a day at a time, a step at a time. And the Lord will hold your hand. He'll pull you up from where you are to where you ought to be. Follow him. He will make you fishers of men. Let's rise up and pray. You make up your mind, you will follow him. So that he will make you the one he wants to make you. There's a dream in the mind of Christ. There's a desire in the heart of Christ. Follow him and he will make you what you ought to be. You will be. You will be. You will be. No Satan out of the pit of hell can hinder your being what God wants you to be. No demons out of the pit of hell can hinder you from being what God wants you to be in your profession, in your ministry, on the evangelistic field, in the pastoral ministry, or in the special work the Lord has laid on your heart as a professional. Follow the Lord and He will make you the success that you ought to be. In Jesus' name we pray. How many of us are promising the Lord you are going to follow the Lord all through? Nothing will make you draw back. Nothing will make you look back. Whatever comes in the way, you will follow the Lord to the end. The Lord will make a success out of your life. He'll bring a fulfillment in your life. Yeah. And what the devil said you cannot do, you will do. Yeah. What your weak mind is telling you you will not do, you will do. Yeah. And what your friends who are looking down on you, we've known you all this year, we know you cannot do it, you will prove them that they are wrong. Yeah. Because the word of God will be the energy of your life. Yeah. You will run, you will not be weary. Yeah. You will walk and you will not fade. The power of the Lord will go with you from here and you will succeed in ministry in Jesus' name. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for all your children and all your servants, my brothers and sisters and fellow ministers. Oh Lord, I pray you put your power, the divine energy and dynamite in every life in Jesus' name. The grace to follow you and follow you to the end, give unto everyone in Jesus' name and the power of the Spirit and the gifts of the Spirit that they need to be able to fulfill the ministry you have called them into give unto them in Jesus name yeah. these men and women who are present here this afternoon Lord they will not fail yeah. they will not be defeated yeah. nothing will conquer them yeah. they will move on until they succeed in Jesus name yeah. give everyone the spirit of the conqueror yeah. the spirit of the achiever and Lord, I pray the dream and the vision you have burst in every heart 
I pray, Lord, you'll fulfill it for every one of them in Jesus' name. Confirm your mighty power and presence in the life and the ministry of everyone. Lord, after this summit, after this conference, we'll be hearing stories of success, stories of progress, and stories of achievement from everyone present here in Jesus' name. Confirm it in every life and family. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray.